Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly, Director of the Federal Trust. Today I'll be talking with John Palmer, a member of the Council of the Federal Trust and a former Guardian correspondent in Brussels. He's been a long-time observer of the Irish and uh, British political scene and, of course, of the European Union as well. Um, we're going to be talking principally about the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, but no doubt our conversation will broaden out. John, a lot of people have been saying over the past few weeks that Liz Truss, in her initial comments and reactions towards the Northern Ireland Protocol, has been uh, less uh, uncompromising, a bit more pragmatic than people feared she might be. Um, can, can you tell us on what that impression is based? Yes, it, it's a... Uh... It is what one is hearing from people who've been engaged with the Prime Minister in discussions about the protocol, uh, remarks from the European Commission, uh, speaking of signs of more flexibility, uh, hopeful progress, uh, a change in mood tone. This is uh, repeated in Dublin, the Irish government uh, has re both the foreign minister, um, well, primarily the foreign minister, has spoken about hopes that um, the gap is narrowing, not yet narrow, not yet eliminated, on some of the key issues. Now, nobody at the moment is revealing uh, uh, concrete details, i.e. specifying the precise areas in which uh, the British government appears to be moving. Um, it is the impression uh, from a different point of view that some unionists have to their dismay, thinking that uh, they, they are uh, going to be faced with um, um, uh, a, a, a future arrangements for the special relationship that allows Northern Ireland to remain part of the single European Single Market and Customs Union, that it, it, it won't be significantly changed to what has been on offer. Now, I believe that the areas where um, progress has been made is in identifying uh, a more precisely focused range of products which would require physical examination uh, uh, on leaving GB, Great Britain, across to Northern Ireland. Uh, the, uh, Why do you think there's been this um, at least partial vote for us? I'm not sure it's a vote for us. I think it is um, uh, a lot of the minutiae distinguishing between particular food products that will remain in Northern Ireland and food products that might uh, pass through Northern Ireland to the Republic and hence enter the single market. Um, uh, they are technical, rather detailed matters, some of which they think can be expedited by the use of uh, IT, of technology, um, uh, rather than requiring uh, significant physical examinations in, in, certain, in certain restricted areas. And primarily, I think, uh, involving foodstuffs, uh, uh, but the, it would not affect the great mass of the trade that has been flowing between GB and Northern Ireland, hence GB into the European uh, single market. That will remain. And, and perhaps it needs saying at this point that the economic impact of the protocol arrangements that have been in force now uh, although uh, uh, criticised by uh, unionists or some unionists, at any rate, have had a very positive economic effects. Northern Do you think Ireland the pressure from America or, or, or other concerns of the United Kingdom government have, have have softened their tone. Do you think that's played a role? Uh, I think it's clear that the British government cannot expect an ambitious long-term trade agreement. Uh, with the uh, present uh, Conservative government in London, while major questions hang over the existence, 
continued existence of the protocol, and hence the wider unresolved question, which you'll no doubt come on to, the wider unresolved question of the future of UK relations with the European Union. No, I think at the moment it, it, it is a... A, a relative question of technical detail. I don't think the bulk of the agreement as it's operated will be uh, at all significantly affected by the kind of uh, micro details on the identification of what they call throughput products that don't need any um, great uh, uh, certification. Uh, I think that, um, uh, that, that that will remain in place. I don't think it will meet the requirements of the DUP. I think they will regard it such an agreement if it does emerge as a, a sellout from their point of view. Uh, but I think it will uh, clear the way for um, uh, resolving the wider impasse in uh, Brexit negotiation, post-Brexit negotiations between uh, the UK uh, and the EU. Perhaps one uh, explosive issue um, uh, for which we don't know uh, really any details at the moment that may also lie behind this. And that is that the UK government uh, seems to be signalling that it has less of a problem with the legal trigger in the present agreement, which would give the European Court of Justice the uh, primary uh, 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 legal and constitutional powers of, of adjudicating uh, the operation of that agreement. That may be linked to something we do know about, which is that the uh, Lord David Frost, Sir David Frost, I think I should have called, no, Lord David Frost, I beg his pardon, uh, Lord Frost, who negotiated uh, the first stages of this agreement with uh, uh, the EU, uh, has not only left the government, but has, we now know, refused repeated offers of alternative senior ministerial appointments in the government of Mrs. Trust, uh, and uh, appears to be positioning himself to be a bitter critic of what emerges from these talks. Well, Frost represents a, a strain of opinion within the Conservative Party, which you can call it by abbreviation the ERG. Uh, are the ERG going to, to swallow this? Uh, uh, weren't they important backers of trust uh, on the basis that she would uh, reflect their own uncompromising attitude? Yes, uh, if, if if that was the only uh, member of the uh, uh, Brexit club that forced through uh, Brexit through uh, uh, the originally through the government and through through the Conservative Party, but we also have the remarkable. Uh, phenomenon of the, the present Minister of um, or Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Steve Baker, uh, who was perhaps one of the most ideological and hardliner of the uh, uh, of the Eurosceptic, Europhobic lobby in the Conservative Party, issuing a public apology to Ireland and to the Irish government for the language and the hostile comportment which the government uh, uh, assumed in the early stages of the Brexit process. He realised this was potentially damaging to legitimate Irish interests and um, he regrets it uh, and uh, believes that we're now in a new stage. I mean, that is quite uh, uh, remarkable. Yes. Uh, I, I, I don't, I just, in one last line, I'm not suggesting all is hunky-dory with the negotiations. I'm not, but it looks as though they are fairly confident that they're proceeding, if this can be resolved the course of this month, to some sort of agreement. How far does the deteriorating economic background uh, affect the government, do you think? Uh, are they more worried about the idea of a trade confrontation with the EU than they would have been six months ago? I think that is absolutely at the heart of all of this, Brendan. Uh, the economic crisis, which seems to be deepening as we speak almost, uh, mm -hmm. seems to be perilously close to some kind of major currency uh, and economic crisis, comes after a period when we now know uh, that a somewhat enfeebled UK economy uh, burdened additionally by Brexit, which has exacted a pretty terrible 
impact on the UK by leading to the diversion of uh, investment, uh, the decline of key sectors of trade, the external trade balance moving in, the, in a very negative direction. Um, but, but I think the, the loss of investment and the loss also of key <clears throat> intellectual resources, major scientific and research projects relocating uh, to uh, the European Union and away from the UK, I think has, as it were, exposed just how vulnerable uh, the UK economy is uh, with the best of circumstances, but to head to a full-scale uh, trade cr uh, uh, trade war with the European Union, I think, is one bridge, uh, burning bridge too many uh, for, for the present government. Somehow they have to disguise all of this, the kind of agreement that coming up with, with uh, some sort of sense of uh, it allows us to have a, a more stable relationship with Europe within which we can pursue our uh, plans for long-term economic change. I don't what know do how they'll sell it. What do you think the significance would be for those long-term relationships if, the, uh, if the, the, the open wound, as it were, of the Northern Ireland Protocol could be set aside, could be resolved? It removes one immediate catastrophic, potentially catastrophic development. We were plunged into a formal trade war and the Commission has spoken of the language of a formal trade war if the clause that was agreed giving uh, judicial, judicial authority to the European Court of Justice and all arbitrating on matters related to the UK agreement. Um, uh, but it will leave us um, very much uh, uh, on a, a difficult, problem-strewn path where all the indicators appear to be that we're heading to a recession and what's worse, a more serious recession uh, than other, other countries are also heading towards recession, uh, uh, even in the European Union. But the European Union, <clears throat> uh, as it moves, particularly to elements of a, a, a being a fiscal as well as a monetary union, and as talking now about becoming an energy union, in the sense that uh, they are uh, uh, aiming at a decisions which would allow uh, major uh, transfers of energy consuming rights uh, 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 arbitrated at a European level to assist countries that are more weakly exposed to the consequences of, of uh, energy shortage as a result of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Oh, so oh, we see, see if I may just ask a question. Um, obviously, uh, getting rid of the problems of the Northern Ireland Protocol will, will, will avert um, uh, disaster, if you like, but don't the problems about the future relationship um, remain intact as long as we have this Conservative government uh, with its commitment to a hard Brexit, with its commitment to uh, estrangement as far as possible from the institutional structures of the European Union? Um, isn't what we've got at the moment all we're ever going to get under this government? I think that's absolutely correct. And indeed, I think it's worth saying that what we don't know is whether whatever agreement is reached on the Northern Ireland Protocol will defuse the very serious political situation in Northern Ireland. Unless by the 28th, I think, of October this month, uh, uh, the Democratic Unionist Party has formally signaled that it will return to the administration in Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland executive, if you like, the Northern Ireland government, uh, that uh, a new, gen a new Northern Ireland general election will have to be called. I mean, this is accepted in London as being the, uh, the, the consequences of a continued veto or abstention by the DUP. So that will uh, raise some very perilous issues of managing that. Nobody thinks there'll be any big political change in the outcome of the next election. Uh, Sinn Féin may make even further gains into the lead, and the DUP's vote may be splintered with other unionist groups, but it will leave that problem very much unresolved. But your, as to your wider point, look, um, outside the European Union, um, the UK has pulled the plug on areas of cooperation, of growth, of stimulus, of innovation, uh, which uh, 
was open to it as a member. It's uh, facing no prospect of a long-term agreement with the Americans, no sign of anything on the similar with Japan, with Japan or China or on any scale whatsoever. I, I think the problems that the UK will face in its uh, isolation can only grow. The DUP are very much concerned, as you've already said, about the possibility, which they see as quite a realistic possibility, that the Northern Ireland Protocol will contribute greatly to the unification of Ireland. Um, are they right about that? And even if they're not entirely right, uh, is there some element of truth in their fears that the Northern Ireland Protocol will be something tending towards encouraging and facilitating a united Ireland? Uh, are there other factors in the background with which the Northern Ireland Protocol may interact, as it were, um, autonomous factors relating to um, the development of opinion in the North, the development of opinion in the South? Um, how do you see the Northern Ireland Protocol and its possible resolution uh, as fitting into the overall question of, of Irish unification? Well, two points, Brendan, if I may, on that. The first point is just to recall that even with uh, the problems surrounding uh, the protocol, the effect of Northern Ireland's participation in the single market and customs union in terms of the economy, of trade, uh, is really truly remarkable. Northern Ireland, as a region of the United Kingdom, was always the slowest growth, the greatest economic problems, uh, lowest income levels in many ways, foreign trade. It, it's now the fastest growing province or uh, region of the United Kingdom. Uh, such is the uh, stimulus of single market and customs union membership. There's been a relocation of companies to Northern Ireland. Uh, there's been a huge infrastructural boom to facilitate rapid trade uh, across the Irish border and thence on to continental ports, uh, which has led to, by the way, diversification of trade from some uh, other UK ports. So that's, uh, that's, on, that's on the one hand. Um, uh, this in turn has had an effect on the wider debate on uh, a, poss a possible future uh, unification, reunification, uh, the end of partition. Uh, there are lots of uh, signs of that. The cephalogical or electoral signs are fairly clear. Uh, Sinn Féin, the Republican Party, is the largest, is the lead party in the present uh, Northern Ireland Assembly. It is the largest party in Dáil Éireann, the uh, 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 Parliament of the Republic. It is poised there to be, almost certainly, the formateur, as they say um, in Europe, the uh, initiator of a, another, a new coalition after the next uh, general election in the Irish Republic. More interestingly, uh, a, a number of steps are now underway to convene uh, citizens' assemblies, which are uh, uh, op uh, increasing, uh, not increasingly open, they're open to uh, participants from all parts of Ireland across the political spectrum, from unionists uh, to republicans and oh, everything in between, uh, who are discussing some real problems, and there are real problems that have to be resolved in a proper, stable, democratic uh, 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 transition to a united Ireland. One is to meet the conditions of a necessary referendum. The British government has interestingly said, if um, a continued evidence of growing openness to the unification of Ireland happens, London itself will do nothing to veto the holding of a new referendum. So they're kind of distinguishing between their attitude and the possible attitude of some parts of the unionist community. Now, I think the most important phenomenon in all of this electorally in the north of Ireland is the emergence of a large middle ground political constituency, mostly in the Alliance Party, but to be found elsewhere as well on some left wing parties that don't fit the normal Catholic, Protestant, Unionist, Nationalist uh, uh, division. Uh, and they are beginning to tackle some very sensitive questions. Uh, some of them relate to constitutional matters. In a United Ireland, is there room for a devolved authority in the north of Ireland, uh, an Ulster assembly of some kind? Secondly, uh, undertakings about national symbols. 
uh, and the rights of different communities, particularly in uh, Northern Ireland, to display their symbols, to pursue their linguistic uh, identities, Irish language for nationalists, Scots uh, 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 for, for uh, many people, or some people anyway, in the unionist community, uh, all those kind of issues. The delicate questions of education in a future United Ireland and health, um, integration of two different health systems. I would say these are still, uh, is work in progress. Good. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of our time. Thank you very much. One, one last um, question. Um, if Liz Truss is instrumental over the next couple of weeks uh, in uh, brokering, uh, uh, an acceptable implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, do you think she'll be around for any length of time in, in order to carry on with this implementation? May it fall to her successor either to um, carry on with the implementation or possibly to reverse the ground that um, has been gained um, by her over the past couple of weeks and perhaps over the next couple of weeks? Uh, Brendan, I'm tempted to reply that while it is fair to ask some very hard and difficult questions, uh, to ask a question about the electoral future of the present Conservative Prime Minister, I think uh, it, it, it defies, uh, 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 would, would defy, you know, the most... It's an unreasonable uh, question, an unreasonable unre question. Let me just say that my own impression is that her own party is now splintering visibly, almost physically in front of us. The language that came out of the 1922 committee, reported in today's papers, about um, uh, we must remove her, we must, we must vote down um, uh, 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 key pieces of legislation she wishes to pursue. And most interestingly, uh, the rebellion in the House of Lords over uh, any changes to the protocol and all the rest of it, uh, 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 excising the British uh, amendment, the government's amendment, which could threaten the position of the European Court of Justice and so on. I think all amount to um, an unwinnable um, battlefield for mistrust, but only one of many battlefields. Good. Well, thank you very much. You've given us much um, to think about. Um, I hope all the listeners and viewers have enjoyed this contribution. And I just remind you that on the Federal Trust website, there are many other similar um, enthralling discussions. Thank you very much and good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.